Have you ever seen pictures of beautiful computer wire and wonder what went into it? Recently at my job, I got to wire up 16 brand new servers. So I took my camera, did a time lapse, and I'm gonna show you some of my secrets to make wiring look good. Today on Rob Labs. This is what I'm wiring up. 16 servers total with the space to add three more. The lower servers get three ethernet cables each, and the upper ones get two ethernet cables and two 10 gig fiber links. This is a total of 49 ethernet cables, 16 fiber pairs, and 33 power cables. First up, I'm pulling all the ethernet cables I plan to use. I pull a little bit extra on all the cables since it's better to come up long than short. Now onto my least favorite part, terminating. I terminate one end of each cable, and I'll terminate the other one later once I've cut it to length. I've always found it easier to do it this way when making custom cables. This takes a long time, so let's skip ahead. Here I'm prepping the labeling for the cables. As a standard, each cable gets a label on both ends, even if they don't leave the rack. It may be overkill, but it makes it much easier to identify cables. Also, all the cables are color-coded to identify what surfaces run over them. For these pulls, I'm putting each cable in a cable cone. It's the white plastic you see in my hand. This keeps the bundle looking good, and it's also numbered so I know which cable goes to what server since I've not yet terminated or labeled the far end. This cable comb is simply some poles drilled in HDPE plastic, but you can buy these pre-made online. Now for the fun part. I start off by hooking up all the cables in this bundle to the switch. To begin, I tried using wax string to keep the bundle together, but I realized it's not working very well. I then swap over to hook and loop tape for the rest of this build. This is nothing special, it's just basic hook and loop cable strap from Harbor Freight that can be cut to any length needed. And since it's cheap, I don't mind using extra. I can't say enough good things about using hook and loop tape and a cable comb. These are the two biggest secrets that make it so much neater to run cables. We still use wax string for runs that are on our ladder racks, but for vertical stuff like this, hook and loop tape works great. Now I cut each cable length with some extra to allow for retermination if needed. I also go ahead and label each cable. Next up is more termination. Again, it takes forever. Cat 6 is just a pain to terminate, so let's jump ahead again. Now onto the fiber runs. Unfortunately, I didn't get to custom order the lengths for these cables, so each one's actually a 5 meter cable. So I spend some time trying to figure out how I want to store the slack. This is not ideal, but I have to work with what I'm given. Each fiber also has a label on both ends. Here 
You may have noticed that I'm leaving cables unhooked. Those are for the three additional servers we may get in the future. I figure rather than have to redo the work later, it's better to run them all at once now. Finally, we have the power cables. Again, I didn't get to pick the length of these cables, so I had to hide the slack as best I could. I also have to try to balance the load between the two power feeds that were run to this rack. So this is the final product. It takes a lot of work, but it makes it so much easier to work on. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. I have another large wiring project that's going to have a lot more connections coming up soon. Be sure to subscribe to ROM Labs for all my latest projects and remember, keep making things.